Welcome again for today's session about Douro. Now we are in Portugal, uh, the Portuguese region of Douro. Uh, I think if somebody thinks about Douro, he thinks about port wine. And this is true because the most famous product from this region at least used to be port wine. However, since a couple of years, 10-15 years, the red wine from this region gains on repetition and is really, really increasing in terms of quality. So it's worth considering for a red wine, the wines from Douro. So let's have a look on the Douro Valley in Portugal. Looking on the map of Portugal, uh, you know, there is this peninsula, Spanish, Portuguese. Yeah? Uh, Portugal is directly at the Atlantic Sea, Atlantic Ocean, uh, located and spreading from north to south. Uh, it's distributed or it's divided into different wine regions and the uh, Douro region is up in the north. Maybe you remember the Vinho Verde uh, region, the Minho region in Portugal. It's a little bit more south than this, but it's up in the north. So it's the cool climate uh, area and the, yeah, maybe wet area. But let's see later on if this is going to happen. Down in the south, we talk about, for example, Alentejo in the region of Lissabon. Uh, really, really hot area. Uh, not to compare with the Douro Valley up there. But a lot of single uh, designations of wines in Portugal existing. The most important and especially because of port wine is the Douro regions. The sub-region of Douro DOC going from the, from the west to the east yeah, is Baixacorgo, Quimacorgo and Douro Superior. This is really significant and important in this region because the best wines, they are coming from the middle, from the Kima Corgo region uh, within the Douro DOC. Let's have a look. We are in the north. World's first designation of origin, 1756. 1756. Yeah? It was really the first one who was making the boundaries and securing the style of wine. And this was mainly due to the, I have to tell the story, <laughs> mainly due to the uh, guys from the UK. The, the British guys, they drank a lot of wine. They loved wine, especially wine from this region. <clears throat> and of course, there was always somebody who decided to make something different and label it as the wines from the Douro or the port wine uh, at that time. And just to secure that when it's written on the label, it's a port, yeah? then it comes from this region of Douro in Portugal. This was done back in 1756. And there was even a lawsuit at that time if somebody was really uh, doing a fraud on the labeling and on the wine style. Since 1979, this origin is allowed for unfortif unfortified wine as well. So the port wine is the fortified wine, you know, adding some spirit, in this case 77% uh, of spirit, the mixture of spirit and wine, uh, to the fermenting must. So the must stops fermenting, the not used residual sugar remains in the wine, which is, by the way, in case of port wine, always about 100 grams per liter, plus minus. Uh, and then this special style is coming up. Three subregions, Kima Corgo, Baixo Corgo, and Douro Superior. Uh, split up and the more we go into the western side uh, we come to the Douro Superior which is by the way bordering to Spain and if you just uh, wonder that Douro the, the name sounds like Duero in Spain yeah it's the same river just a different name so in Portugal the river is called Douro in Spain the river called, is called Duero this is how it, how it goes when you have been there in this region, you know that the vineyards are on terraces. It's really, really nice being there, coming from the top uh, street, looking down there, all the terraces down. It's like an amphitheater uh, built up in a nice uh, shape. And it's UNESCO World Heritage. So it's really secured by UNESCO, uh, this area, because of the history and because of the, of the wine style. Looking on the distribution on lower Corgo, upper Corgo uh, and upper Douro, 
we see that by the total area in hectare which could be planted, Upper Doro is in the lead with 110,000 hectares. But areas under vine, which is the second column, yeah, we see that Upper Doro is not on the lead. So the biggest portion within the area is taken by Lower Corgo in comparison. So if you compare this uh, total area and the area under vine, we about 29%. The Upper Corgo, 22%. And the Upper Doro with 9% of area, which makes sense because the highest quality comes from the first two ones, so the upper corgo especially and the lower corgo uh, on top of it. Most of the still wine or unfortunate wine comes, by the way, from the upper Douro uh, region. Those three subregions, the, the Baixo corgo or lower corgo, the center of this region is Pesa de Regua. Yeah? Here, a lot of basic wine production done, which is finding the way to steel wine production as well as to the port wine production. The upper Corgo, there is the, let's say, the capital of the port wine region, Binao. A uh, really nice, nice city there uh, located, and it's the center of the port. So, when you visit the port wine region, you most likely stay in a finca or <laughs> in a hotel in the Pinao city there. On Douro Superior, towards the Spanish border, very hot, very dry, mainly for steel wine, as said before. And very, very important uh, institution in this Port Wine region, placed in Porto, the city of Porto, is the IVDP, the Institute for Port Wine. So why they are so important? First of all, they define the varieties uh, which are allowed to be used for port wine. Secondly, they control the market. Yeah, they have a look there, they make marketing, they uh, regulate kind of the amount of bottles, they do the uh, classification or clarification um, on the vintage years. So the institute will say, okay, this year is a vintage year for port wine. And then another important thing is they clarify or they def define the quality of the spirit used for the fortification. So not every spirit can be used uh, because of flavor influence of the spirit, of cleanness of the spirit. All this is judged by the Institute. And then you get a, a label saying, yes, you can use this spirit for the port wine production. So this is the Institute for, for port wines. Key facts. They reached about yeah, 44,000 hectares. We lie in the 41 uh, degree latitude on the north side. The average rain rate, 1,000 millimeter. It very much depends where you are in this region. Because the more you go to the, west, to the east, to the Spanish border, the lower the rain is going to be. Here we even talk about 300, 400 millimeters, if you are lucky. Yeah? Downy powdery mildew is an issue because of the high humidity in the regions towards the uh, west or the Atlantic. But there's a mountain in between, which is the good thing. Yeah? And the total production volume, which is of course mainly port wine produced, uh, quite, uh, quite high, I would say, in comparison to other uh, regions in there. Principal grape varieties, and this is one uh, thing which is in common in Portugal. They've got a hell of indigenous grape varieties. Yeah? So the, just to name the few important ones, yeah? Turiga Nacional, uh, Tinta Rores, uh, Tinta Chao, uh, Tinta Barocca, for example. Those are all varieties uh, for the port wine production as well as for the uh, non-fortified wine production. Uh, Malvasi on the, on the white side, uh, Viosinho on the white side. These are, yeah, Local grape varieties, uh, some of them you only find in, in Portuguese or in Portugal. Yeah? The wine law in Portugal defines more than 100 varieties. Yeah? In comparison, in Austria, we've got 40 uh, varieties defined for quality wine. The wine region, uh, Douro itself, can be split up uh, in further sub-regions. 
they are all entitled to be named under the Duro DOC designation and they can be mentioned on the label. This thing is just coming up. So the, the, the regions or the sub-regions, they make their own standing right now and they start putting the names on the label. So you will see it in future on even more having, for example, Borba or Evora on the, on the label uh, written of a Duro DOC designation wide. The climate, as I said before, there's a mountain, yeah, and the mountain Mararo and Ponte Muro uh, shelters the winds from the Atlantic as well as the rain from the Atlantic. So if you go there with the car, you start in Porto, then you go up the mountain, and then you just go down the mountain again and you enter the, uh, the port wine region, the Oro wine region, uh, just from the, really from the very high, high side. Rain. The more you're west, so let's see at the border of the mountains, 1,500 millimeters down to 400 millimeters uh, in the east towards the Spanish border. Summer, high temperatures up to 40 degrees. During winter, frost can happen. I just had a look today. There's some snow there even, oh, pretty nice. Yeah? And the more you go into the inland, the drier and the hotter it is going to be. The soils, quite diverse. By far, by far, the most important soil in the Douro region is schist. Yeah? It's schist, it's vertical schist, where the roots of the wines can really go down very, very deep. Uh, you will see there's quite a lot of old wines as well in the region. There are even uncrafted wines in the region, still before Phylloxera, quite interesting. And beside the schist soils, granite, limestone and rock. So again, the topic here is minerality in the wines, the full-bodied wines. The vineyards, they are built on terraces, as said before. And there's a special <coughs> way of building terraces, which is historically, with stone walls. Quite narrow, so maybe one or two rows of wines can be built there, and then there's the stone wall making the terrace for the next wine. These terraces are called socalcos. In modern times, they found a way how to build these terraces without stone walls. Yeah? So these are called patamares. And then, of course, there's traditional vertical planting. Yeah? These are Vinha Alto, that's the name for it, which can be mechanically harvested, mechanically worked on. So calcos, <coughs> you cannot do any mechanical work. No, it's all handwork, what they have to be done. Traditionally, the plantings, the tradition in Portugal are field plants. So one variety beside the other variety, beside the next variety, and that's how it's built up. Just from the 70s onwards, they started to make single varietal plantings, mainly based on the highest quality grape of the, grape of the region, which is not Tempranillo, Tintororis, yeah? No, it's Torriga Nacional. This is the red grape variety for Portugal. And back in 1982, the Trasomon uh, Rural Development Project was developed, and this was then really specifying which grapes should be planted where. And the, let's say, the major grape varieties like Turiga Nacional, Tinta Roris, Turiga Franca, Tinta Barocca, and Tinta Chao, they were enforced to be planted much more because they are considered to have the highest uh, quality. The plantings, not in the Socalcos terraces, but on the normal Vinue Alto uh, plantings, trellis system, single and double GO, as we know it from other regions in the world. So one thing which is still in place, but not, uh, how to say, according to the European Union, it's not allowed to define a price for, let's say, grapes or for vineyards, for whatever. But there is a system in Portugal classifying the vineyards in categories from A till F. So there are certain criteria which are judged on, and you get uh, points. You get minus points, plus points for, let's say, altitude, for the steepness of the, of, this, of the site, and so on and so on. 
heritage is, is part there as well, by the way. You sum up the numbers and then you categorize, okay, the number is high enough to become a class A or maybe a class D winner. So what does it mean? In former times, it was like a class A or grapes from a class A vineyard defined the price level per kilogram of grapes bought from the wine houses. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of wine growers or grape growers in this region not doing their own wine. They are all delivering to the big houses like Fonseca, for example, Symington is there, Quinta da Noval, and so on. Yeah? So the grape price per kilogram is defined as a base with the class A uh, vineyard. This is 100%. And then you just deduct a certain percentage for a B class, C class, D class, E class, or F class. And uh, you know exactly what's the price for your grapes you're getting from the winery. So this is a system uh, used in the uh, Douro region, especially in the Port Wine region. From history, as I said before, the first uh, demarcation we got in the world yeah, was the Port Wine region. There's a lot of, of history, of course. Wine was produced already 2000 years back. The Romans were there. Nine, uh, not 19, sorry, 1675, the first or earliest mentioning of port wine was coming up. The port wine, just a short story, how this comes up, the wine was, normal still wine, was transported to the UK uh, with a ship. And of course, you can imagine after three, four, five weeks on the ship, uh, how the wine really tasted when it arrived in the UK, in London. People didn't like it. And then somebody found out if you add spirit to the wine, it stays, it holds. And this was important. And finally, when the wine arrived in the UK, the people tasted this wine and said, this is a really good wine. We want to have this every time. Yeah? Please make sure that this wine is always like that. And this was mainly the, yeah, the, the invention of port wine. So adding a spirit just to make the wine stable. This was uh, the, the thing. So 1756, the Dio port was uh, established. And back in 1952, the first high quality table wine from this region was making a big bang on the market uh, because up to this time only port wine was known. But it took another yeah, 20 years until, uh, or for even 40 years until unfortified wines became part of the classification system. World Heritage Site since 2001. Grape varieties, I said already, a lot of indigenous grape varieties, between 80, 100, 120 varieties uh, defined. Traditional port varieties are used for the unfortified wines as well. I told you already, Turiga Franca, Tinta Roris, Tinta Barocca, Turiga Nacional, Tinta Chao, Tinta Mareo is there. On the white side, Ravigato, Viosinho, Malvasia Fina, for example, Goveo, Codega, those are all names for the Portuguese varieties uh, producing white wine, as well as white port wine. Yeah? So these varieties are used for the white port as well. Talking about wine styles, of course, we've got, yeah, fully punchy, powerful red wines from this region. As said before, more than 100 indigenous varieties are allowed. Deep color, moderate acidity, and especially with port, we got the two main styles on red side, the ruby port, the tawny port, we've got a white port, and we got a rosé port. Yeah, a little portion of port production is rosé, which is quite interesting, refreshing, uh, distinct wine with a very, very high aromatic uh, beside that. European funds came in since 1986, so joining the European Union. This brought a lot of new equipment, uh, much more hygiene. When I'm talking about new equipment, uh, especially with the port wine production, maybe you have heard about these auto vinifiers. This is a system um, doing the part of the fermentation and especially the extraction of color and tannins uh, to the wine on a self-automatic way. So there is no external power source getting the system running. Uh, 
it's like a perpetuum mobile. So it's running on its own, uh, caused by the pressure of the carbon dioxide produced during the fermentation. Uh, you can look up on the, on the internet for it if you want to. But this was invented in this region because there was no power, no, uh, yeah, there was no power at all to be sourced. And even until the late 1950s and 60s, there was no power at all there. So the EU funds, 1986, was really, really a push in the development of energy uh, in this in this region. The uh, yeah, the, the grapes are they are coming uh, from the different vineyards, and especially those ones which are coming from the granite soils. Uh, they are used for the fresh white wines. The reds they used to be picked. Uh, relatively late, yeah? they are now picked a little bit er earlier to keep the freshness and to keep the alcohol level down. Yeah? Of course, if I produce port wine, then I would like to have as much as color and as much as flavor in the skins. So this gives the indication for the harvest time uh, in there. And once you are there in the region, you will see a lot of old bells, a lot of old bells. Even in the port wine production, huge, really huge old bells used for the ruby production, 10,000 liters, 15,000 liters, 20,000 liters. Uh, this is quite impressive. Uh, new French old bells, sometimes, but not the norm, by far not the norm. The focus on the wines is on the varietal flavors and the oak, the French oak, the Parix, for example, they would really ruin these fresh flavors. Specific wine terms, yep, beside the uh, European regulation for wine terms, we've got the Wieners Velhas, which means old wines. This is not in the law at all, but it's used by the wineries just to show the importance of old sites. And I told you there are wines 100, 120, 150 years of age out there and the labor-intensive works. So what does labor-intensive works mean in this context? So you, you remember this terraces, the socalcos? These stone walls, they need to be, let's say, maintained year in, year out. They need to be rebuilt because of erosion, for example. And this is a lot of work. Hand harvest in these terraces, a lot of work. And just to show this intense labor work yeah, with old wines, this is put on the label. So once you see this on the label, on a Portuguese wine, you know, old wines, quite intensive work. It can be a little bit more expensive. Although Portuguese wine is not the most expensive in the world, it's still, uh, how to say, uh, quite good price uh, quality ratio. Uh, really, really nice uh, and affordable, of course. What is important for the region of Douro? Tourism. Port wine, port wine, port wine. Uh, Via Nova de Gaia, this used to be the, the aging or maturation city for the port wines. Uh, I think even 10 to 15 years back, it was just allowed to call a wine port as long as it was aged in Villa Nova de Gaia or in Porto, yeah, not within the region. This has changed. There's a new law now allowing uh, the maturation of the port wine in the region itself as well. This is mainly due to the electricity coming into this region. So we can have the refrigerated halls, refrigerated and climate controlled um, uh, vessels, for example, which is the important thing for aging the wine. Otherwise, it would become much too hot and the, the wine would die. Just remember, a tawny port, a 30 years tawny port, has an average age of 30 years of all the wines. So some wines are in there which might be 40 or 50 or 60 years of age. And if the conditions are not fine, then you couldn't use these wines anymore. And there's a big, big Douro International Natural Park, uh, which is really worth seeing and uh, looking on it. Leading producers, of course, there are a lot of ones. I split up here in the porthouses like Graham's Ferrer, Dow, Quinta de Valado, Tejas, Quinta de Bacheca, Nieport, Sandeman. Yeah, Sandeman is not only producing sherry, they are producing port as well, of course, or the other way around, like you want it. And for the unfortified wines, uh, you can see the names there. I just listed some of them. There are a lot more, of course. 
Uh, and it's really interesting to be in this region and have a chat with those guys because Portuguese are uh, in a positive sense different and they like what they are doing and they like to tell what they are doing. So it just can uh, encourage you to go there. Labels, yeah, beside the normal European uh, regulation, vintage, grape varieties, sometimes on, on non fortified wines, the grape variety is mentioned. Mostly you just see the old Duro, that's it, nothing more. And if it's your Duro, on the back label, you see it on the right hand side of the slide, the lower part, there's a specific Duro back label existing with again a numbering scheme behind, looking against fraud and being a guarantee that the grapes for this wine are only coming out of this region. This is really, really important for them. Okay, this was it. In a nutshell, what I want to tell you about the Douro region. So beside port, there is a lot of other wine. There is still wine. There is white wine. They are upcoming in the world uh, of wine. They deliver very, very good quality for a very nice price, of course. And port wine is still the major product from there based on indigenous grape varieties. So this is the Douro region in a nutshell. Thank you.